This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live as always from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. Uh, before we go any further, I mean, I think uh, little needs to be said. We are in festive attire, and rightly so, as we get into Diwali. Uh, wishing all of you uh, guys a very happy Dhanteras, uh, and of course, uh, festivities ahead. Guys, hi, good morning. Good morning. morning. Good morning, gentlemen, and uh, happy Dhanteras to all our viewers. Happy Dhanteras <laughs> to the two of you as well. And I must say, viewers, uh, check out our newsroom. It's bright and festive, and I think uh, you know the vibe that uh, we're all in today. Well, that's right. Uh, happy Dantera <laughs> to all our viewers. And you know, Prashant, uh, just before we went on air, we were just discussing that Sulbi today is looking so beautiful, so elegant. She's just oh, looking wow. wow. Oh, no, you had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll grant you this. It's, it's the festive. What is season. the what's the inside joke? I mean, there is something to it, oh, right? What's okay, the, Prashant, you need to catch up. Prashant, <laughs> this thing, this is like a week old. It's just you're looking like a wow. No, Prashant. I said looking wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm completing it then for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, we'll come back with the history of it through the course of the show. Uh, but, well, we've got a market to track, so let's just pick it up uh, exactly there. What you need to know as we kick off another trading session. Uh, you know, market-wise, it's not looking all that uh, festive, so as to speak, especially the handoff from the U.S. So let's begin uh, with what the most important stuff is, what you need to know. Uh, so you basically had a risk-off overnight. U.S. equities sold off. They've been going up uh, for many days in a row, both the S&P and the Nasdaq. But yesterday, they uh, snapped that winning streak. And it was a new reason which, which, got, uh, which led to this risk-off, which is a poor bond auction. Uh, you know, the U.S. Treasury basically sold $24 billion in 30-year bonds, and there was very poor demand for that. Uh, and that is, I mean, I would say a relatively new thing. You know, bond market auctions are a routine kind of thing, uh, which nobody really notices. It comes and goes. But that's uh, sparking a risk off. I mean, I think that puts the focus very squarely on the, uh, you know, money printing, which is going on in the U.S., the unsustainable debt levels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just one day. But it's basically now happened for two or three times during this year, 2023. More on that a little later. The Nasdaq was down about 1%. Uh, and as I said, it basically the, the winning streak was snapped at nine days. I mean, it had go, been going up. And, of course, for the S&P, it was eight. Uh, so, as I said, combination of a weak U.S. auction and hawkish wet speak. So, there were two things which uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, came together. Uh, Fed Chair Powell, and we highlighted this yesterday during the day, that this is a risk. Uh, he, he spoke... And uh, his basic uh, point was, and I quote, not to be misled by a few months of inflation, softish inflation. And I think markets kind of latched onto it. But the point I think which uh, markets did not like is that the speech when Fed Chair spoke, Powell spoke, you know, the long end of the U.S. yield curve was already up 15 basis points. So it was not as if he had to push yields up by, being, uh, by talking tough. Yields were already up 15 basis points and he comes in and he kind of says uh, what he said. Uh, and I think that is why uh, there was the, uh, the focus on uh, uh, this was that much more. So the U.S. 10-year bond deal, what did it do? It jumped 14 basis points. It uh, went up to 4.63. It's still a good 35 basis points off the, you know, 5% kind of levels, which where we were about 12, 13 sessions back. The dollar index, it was, we saw broad dollar strength, but the index itself was up about a third of a percent. We are back at about 106 levels. Oil went up a little bit, but we're still under an $80 barrel mark. Now, uh, just so circling back to the levels here, uh, it's possible, and we said this yesterday morning as well, that a day or two worth of pullback would be good. I mean, uh, and it, it looked likely yesterday. We got it yesterday. I would say we perhaps could get a sideways to slightly lower market going into the weekend as well. Of course, uh, given all that ha happened overnight in the U.S., uh, the immediate support for the Nifty stands at about 19,373, which is the 20-day moving average. But it is, I mean, just around the corner. So... Uh, you know, it's pretty nearby. The trend is not down. I, I would still say that the trend is up. The trend is not down till the 19200 level is broken. Remember, I mean, if you track what FIs have been doing in the derivative markets, etc., short covering is still not over. So you still have that element in place. But the question is, will we first go up before go, I mean, going down or the, vice versa? Uh, the resistance for the Nifty is at 19530, which is the 50% retracement of the full fall from the all-time high to the recent low. Coming to the Nifty Bank, uh, the resistance comes in at the 40-day exponential moving average, which is at about 43,880. 
and then the 50% retracement, which is 44,208, and supports, as we highlighted yesterday as well, come in around the 43,200 mark. The Gift Nifty will come up on your screen, and I think uh, it promises. Yesterday was rather dull. Maybe we'll get a bit of a more uh, vibrant market, hopefully not too down, sideways still doable as we head into the festivities and, of course, Diwali on Sunday. Sorry. Uh, Prashant, I was thinking someone should give Jay Powell a box of sweets, some laddu, some mithai, get him into the festive spirit, right? Because it's <laughs> kind of uh, really uh, poured cold water on all the excitement and exuberance around. You know, I'll tell <laughs> you guys why. Uh, he was, by the way, this is an aside, he was not in a good mood as well. If you watch the press conference, mm. he was interrupted by climate protesters from the back of the room. And there were some harsh words exchanged between them and him. So I think, you know, it, yeah, it's it not got him into a... Humor, humor market. Yeah, I mean, fair uh, to say, overnight, uh, most were fed up. <laughs> you know, it's Ed Yardini, I tweeted this yesterday. Ed Yardini calls it the Federal Open Mouth Committee, <laughs> not the Open Market Committee, because I mean, you guys talk too much, right? Not so, uh, not too much, so much. Uh, <laughs> and we just had the, you know, the, the rate meeting uh, just a couple of days back, just a week back. Anyway, I mean, since we're talking so much about it, I thought I'll put the exact quote up on the screen so you can decipher uh, the comments for yourself. Uh, and I quote, this is Jay Powell at that IMF event that uh, Prashant was just talking about. He says, the Federal Open Market Committee is committed to achieving a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to, bl to bring inflation down to 2% over time. We are not confident that we have achieved such a stance. And it was really this one remark, that one line, that uh, sparked a risk off, a risk off that's continuing across Asia this morning, by the way. Uh, have to point this out, that markets are down quite a bit, particularly Hong Kong. It's down almost a percent and a half. Uh, Japan's down, mainland China is down, Singapore's off to a weak start. So, short point, global queues not in our favor from the equity point of view. But hey, look at crude. I mean, guys, I'm hell bent on finding the silver lining in everything today. So, crude oil, because of these comments and the fact that, uh, you know, there's this question mark on demand, huge rise in US oil inventories over the week as well, it actually slipped below $80 a barrel uh, intraday trade. From the peak of around $96 a barrel, Brent is down 16%. The peak was hit on the 27th of September. So the fall in oil price is something that we can definitely hold on to and the market will, will probably want to do that. Uh, just to talk about uh, you know, the levels, Prashant has pointed uh, the, the critical ones out. It's really all about trading those levels because the market has been absolutely range-bound, at least at the headline index level. Uh, so the 20 DMA is in play. We're just around that pivot of 19,373. 100 DMA is a little higher than where the Nifty is right now, closer to 19,475, 476. Uh, so we'll watch out for these levels and see whether they hold or not. In terms of performance, the week so far has been all about just tracking mid caps and small caps and reacting to numbers. And let's see if we get more of the same today. My, my sense is that's how it might just play out. Uh, once that headline index move is digested, the global reaction is digested. Uh, look at the mid-cap index. It's up about 2.5%. Small cap index even better, 2.6%. Uh, Nifty, Bank Nifty, not bad. Despite all of this volatility, we're still up about a percent for the week. So Diwali week has, uh, you know, has been going so far so good, I would, I would say. Lots of earnings in play. And we actually have some uh, good earnings for, from, the, uh, you know, from last evening as well as Z. Uh, to talk about BEMLs, numbers are very, very good. So we'll talk about that as we go forward. Today is a big day. You've got M&M, Aisha, ONGC, Coal India, Hindalco, of course, will keep uh, Nigel busy. Uh, and then there's, uh, there's HAL. By the way, HAL has also signed uh, a contract uh, with, I think, Boeing, one of the, the major uh, international companies uh, for a MRO facility. So that stocks remains in the news. So I guess from the way I look at it, what about individual stocks once you digest the big opening headline move? Well, uh, the you know, and since it's Dantera, I just want to put a data point out there. In the last one year, actually, gold has been the outperformer. You know, gold has mm. uh, given you returns in high teens compared to the benchmark index, which is actually around 10% odd. So mom is smiling at home, you know, she's saying, I told you so. The women know best. <laughs> but, yeah. but since we're talking about uh, the equity markets, let's focus on that. It seems the Nifty is in this broad 250, 300 point range on. And the Nifty Bank, you know, that's holding on to crucial support levels, which I'll tell you about in just a bit. And that's going to be rather crucial. How are the FIs positioned? Well, they're still net short on the market. They have close to 81% of their positions on the short side. Longs are around 19% approximately. And since we're starting a new contract, yesterday we had weekly expiry that played out, so now all eyes are on the new contract. You have two strikes that are very active. The 19,500 call, which has the highest open interest on the call side. And on the put side, you have the 19,400 put, which the premium out there is roughly around 80 rupees yesterday. So that gives us the levels, you know, the levels for the day itself. You have the 19,465 level, which we visited twice in the last few sessions, and we couldn't get past that. 
So that's a bit of a resistance level on the upside. On the downside, since we have the highest open interest on the put side at around 19,400, with the premium around 80 rupees, well, 19,320 becomes an important support zone. The broader range, though, is 19,250 to 19,550. Just try to skew, skew that down because I wanted to give you the range for the day. You know, broadly, you're looking at the 19,300 to 19,400 and uh, 19,460 approximately. The Nifty Bank, well, that's conquered the 20 as well as the 200 DMA. Now, today at, uh, at the start itself, we could see it testing the 20 DMA, but you'll want it to hold on to these levels because that's going to be a very, very crucial support zone. The gift nifty, well, it's reacting to the Fed chair overnight and the cues that we've got. The yield spiked a little bit. You had uh, Brent crude prices that popped up a little bit. The dollar index a little stronger. So on the back of that, it's down close to under 100 points. So we'll be starting closer under 19,300, which is an important level on the, on, at the end of today. The bulls will want to, you know, conquer that on a closing basis. 19,300, 19,320. Let's see how this goes, guys. Okay, absolutely. Let's see uh, whether the bulls can defend some of those critical levels or not. Uh, let's get started. It is time for our equity call of the morning. And uh, this is a call that's coming in uh, from Jeffrey. So let's roll that one out for you. On equities, Mahesh Nandulkar of Jeffrey says, the Nifty is down 4% since they raised cash in the model portfolio in mid-September. Rich valuations, geopolitical worries and state elections could keep market volatility elevated in the near term. Jefferies is still overweight on cyclicals such as industrials, property and banks as they believe the long-awaited turn in Indian corporate capex is well underway which combined with a strong housing cycle should deliver strong earnings growth. Mahesh adds that uh, they would look to raise weights in uh, cyclicals since the near-term political uncertainty, uh, once the near-term political uncertainties subside. Okay, well, let's get you some money market views as well. So this is, uh, you know, V. Lakshman and weighing in on the rupee who says that uh, the dollar witnessed a sharp sell-off last week as market uh, saw Fed at the end of a rate hike cycle but recovered a little during the week. Oil prices have also dipped to a three-month low on account of low global demand and receding concerns about West Asia supply disruption. Rupee demand range-bound and is expected to be in the range of between 83.05 to 83.45 to the dollar in the coming week. Okay, let's move to bonds then. On bonds, uh, Lakshmanan says bond yields fell to 7.25%, tracking US Treasuries, which fell 50 basis points from their 16-year high levels. Sharp fall in crude and no OMO sale announcement from RBI also supported bond prices. They expect the 10-year bond yield to trade in a range of 7.2 to 7.35% in the coming sessions. Well, we have a lot of stock-specific action to track for you, and there are plenty of results that came in overnight, but we have skewed it down to our special top 10 segment. Let's run you through the list. We're looking at Z Entertainment, Oro Pharma, Torrent Power, Lemon Tree, as well as Senko Gold. All of them will be reacting to positive news flow. So it appears it's split down the middle in our top 10 segment as well. On the flip side, stocks that could react to negative news flow include Muthut Finance, RVNL, Campus, Aditya Bidla Fashion, and Piramal Enterprises.